This Wednesday will mark 50 years since the launch of Apollo 17, humanity's last crewed spaceflight to the moon. On December 7th, uh, 1972, astronauts Eugene Cernan, Ronald Evans, and Harrison Schmidt blasted off in their Saturn V rocket. Five hours and six minutes after the launch, from a distance of 29,000 kilometers or 18,000 miles from Earth, one of the Apollo 17 astronauts pointed their 70 millimeter medium format Hasselblad camera out the command module window and snapped one of the most famous photographs of all time, the blue marble. This iconic image has fascinated and inspired generations of humans, including myself. 21 years ago, I created my yin-yang planets image using the blue marble photo of Earth and a high-resolution composite image of Mars that was assembled from 102 Viking orbiter images from the 1970s, which itself is probably the most famous image of the red planet. Uh, the yin-yang planet symbol has stuck with me ever since, adorning my computer, my website, YouTube channels, and even merchandise, some of which you can see behind me. With regards to the raw space merch store, I am by far my own biggest customer, and that is okay. Back to the blue marble, though. Here's the original image that it was cropped from. It has NASA designation AS17-148-22727. It was the third in a series of three nearly identical images. Uh, Earth appears off-center and upside down without the color correction that was later applied. The photo was taken by either Harrison Schmidt or Ronald Evans. There's some debate as to who actually took it. Whichever astronaut it was, we're all very grateful. An iconic image can last forever. Four days after Apollo 17 launched, the lunar, the lunar module Challenger landed on the lunar surface in the taurus littrow Valley region, with Cernan and Schmidt aboard. Evans remained in the orbiting command module America. They landed on December 11th at 1954 and 58 seconds UTC, which is, <laughs> which is exactly 50 years, 5 minutes, and 2 seconds before the start of next week's Space Week, not accounting for the possible delay due to um, uh, the upcoming Artem Artemis event that I'm going to mention later on. Now, they spent three days on the moon conducting three EVAs, or moonwalks, totaling about 22 hours, four minutes outside the lander. Harrison Schmidt was the only professional geologist we ever sent to the moon, and much of their time on the ground was spent driving the lunar rover a total of 35 kilometers, or 22 miles, and collecting 110 kilograms, or 243 pounds, of moon rocks from various sites. They ascended from the lunar surface on December 14th at 2254 UTC. Here we see a photo, a photo of the Mare Orientale region of the moon during lunar nighttime, illuminated only by Earthshine, the sun's light reflected off of the Earth. Now, Earth is much larger and high, has a higher albedo reflectivity than the moon, so nighttime on the Earth-facing side of the moon is still reasonably well lit except when the moon is close to full, since, from its perspective, the moon would be a thin crescent. Even when the moon passes directly into Earth's shadow, uh, during a total lunar eclipse, it's still illuminated by the refracted red light of all the world's sunrises and sunsets at once. I guess the only parts of the moon that get really dark are the far side, which faces away from the Earth, and the permanently shadowed craters near the poles, like Shackleton. Even in those places, though, there's still starlight. At about 296,000 kilometers, or 184,000 miles from Earth, Ronald Evan performed the third and final deep space EVA in history, retrieving the film cassettes from the service module. Finally, Apollo 17 splashed down on December 19th in the Pacific Ocean, marking the end of the Apollo era. It's been 50 years since, <clears throat> since humans last stood on the moon. Excuse me, got a tickle. 
At this very moment, the uncrewed Artemis I Orion spacecraft is about to swing past the moon on its way back to Earth, paving the way for this generation's lunar explorers. Artemis II in 2024, which will orbit but not land, and Artemis III in 2025, which will land near the lunar south pole. Of course, assuming the successful deployment of the Lunar Gateway mini space station and the completion of the human landing system Lunar Starship by SpaceX. There's still a lot to do, but at least the moon ball is once again rolling. <laughs>